Cognifying. A word used by Kevin Kelly in his book published in 2016 called The Inevitable. The Inevitable, Understanding the Twelve Technological Forces That Will Shape Our Future, a New York Times bestseller, in which he writes about these trends for the next 30 years that will revolutionize the way we buy, work, learn, and communicate. He considers this technological trend as the most important one. The advantages gained from cognifying inert things would be hundreds of times more disruptive to our lives than the transformations gained by industrialization. To cognify means to make smarter, to make things more intelligent. Something that learns, something that adapts, something that changes, and in, and in, in a very orderly way. We already have artificial intelligence helping doctors by providing better x-ray diagnostics. We have AI in planes, in cars. This time we're telling the AI to learn by itself, and this changes everything. AI is learning how to learn. Kevin calls this artificial smartness, because there are different kinds of intelligence, like emotional intelligence, spatial intelligence, linguistic intelligence, and so on. Calculator is smarter than you are in arithmetic. GPS unit is smarter than you are in, nav in spatial navigation. Google is smarter than you are in long-term recall. And so the point about those kinds of smartness is that they're not human-like. They're not like, they don't think like the way we think. Kevin disagrees about the perspective of intelligence as one-dimensional. He argues that we have different types of thinking. Our intelligence is like a symphony played by different instruments, and each of these instruments is a type of thinking, like deductive reasoning, spatial reasoning, emotional intelligence, and all of these types vary from individual to individual. Just like Nikolaus Copernicus said we're not on a planet at the center of the universe, Kevin argues that our ways of thinking are a few among thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, or even millions of different ways of thinking. These yet undiscovered artificial minds, made possible by AI, would make problems that would be only solvable in a two-step process, when humans would work together with artificial intelligence. As humans to solve, they may exceed our capacity as humans to solve, and we may have to solve them with a two-step process where we invent a kind of a mind that can work with us to solve those problems. I think in the long term, what we'll discover is that out in this galaxy of all possible minds, we're way out on the edge. We're not at the center, we're at the edge. We have a very peculiar, distinctive kind of intelligence. And our job right now, in the next century even, is to find and discover and invent as many different kinds of thinking as possible. Now, thanks to artificial power, we can make highways, skyscrapers, railways. With a flick of your wrists, you can turn a 250 horsepower car on. With electricity, we're able to replace muscles. An electric pump can replace thousands of men working with water pumps. The first industrial revolution enabled the creation of artificial power, which is the ability to use fossil fuels and steam engines to generate power significantly greater than that of human and animal muscles. Take fossil fuels and steam engines and to make a power that far exceeded our ability to use our muscles and animal muscles. So anything built in the agriculture area era had to be built with human animal muscle. Electricity began to be used as a commodity since then. With that, human life evolved tremendously. It opened a door to mind-blowing possibilities never imagined, like the internet, one of the greatest inventions man has ever created. Okay, that's the power that we have available. And we can actually distribute that power on an electric grid so that every home, farmstead, factory had access to this power. And it was a utility, a commodity that anybody could purchase just by plugging something in. So even a farmer on a homestead could have a great wild idea where you could take something and you could electrify it. You could take like a manual water pump. And then instead of using human muscles to pump water, hey, we'll add electricity to it, we'll electrify it. And then you have 
the electric pump, and you multiply that by a thousand, a hundred thousand, a million times, and that's the Industrial Revolution. Now, instead of brains, we're going to have artificial minds at our disposal. Following the example, at first, we had a manual water pump, moved by muscles. Then, we created the electric water pump, moved by electricity. Now, the new era, Kevin says, would bring us the smart pump, moved by electricity and artificial minds. That would make electric water pumps to take decisions, consequently working more efficiently. In the AI era, we're gonna have minds at our disposal. What would be the possibilities of having millions of minds at your service, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year? Kevin believes AI is gonna become an accessible, purchasable commodity, just like electricity. With minds at our disposal, we can have cars that can take decisions for us. A self-driving car, for example. In Kevin's own words, you can take the most unlikely thing you can possibly imagine and add AI to it. Endless possibilities. Imagine the impacts of AI in the healthcare, telecommunication, food, or education industry, among many others. What would be an impactful AI invention, be it good or bad, in your opinion? Which industries would benefit the most from it? In these times of doubt, the question, are we going to lose our jobs to AI, is a very common one nowadays. Kevin Kelly presents a solution to this. Centaurs. I'll explain. With this new trend of AIs competing in the most complex games and winning against humans in their own territory, like chess, Go, or many online video games already, people are realizing they might not be the smartest in the room. They're learning even more from their mistakes, closer and closer to optimal, and this is thanks to AI. Chess, for example. From the top world chess players to the newcomers, many of them use AI as guidance for stronger decisions, and they get better and better. The game gets more and more complex. When Garry Kasparov, one of the greatest chess players of all time, lost to Deep Blue in the 90s, he started playing against AI over and over. In different styles, doing all kinds of experiments he could. He was getting better. He realized that, with the help of artificial intelligence, he was like a two-in-one, like a centaur. That's what humans have become nowadays, centaurs. Humans are being helped by AI again and again, on a daily basis, even without realizing it. AI is here to stay, and human beings are being pushed into it. According to Kevin, humans need to team up with artificial intelligence, and the more they know how to work with it, the higher their wages will be. Working with AI might open a door to a corridor, full of new skills to be learned. The idea is that some jobs will disappear, but more will be created. Based on PwC's Global Artificial Intelligence Study, by 2030, AI will lead to an estimated $15.7 trillion increase in global GDP. We're going to be basically paid by how well we work with AIs next to them. Again, their, their intelligence will be complementary in many ways to ours. And so I think the way I would suggest that we enter is to understand that we're going to be working with these things rather than against them. So that's cognifying. 